Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to another episode of the Jazz Nation community with me, Arpit. And this week we have Mr. Himanshu Periwal on the show. So Himanshu is an educator, an entrepreneur and an angel investor. So he has worked with some of the top-notch brands like Google, Amazon, Clevertap, Ixico. Uh, so Himanshu was a part of the team that launched Amazon in India and he was the first product manager for Amazon. So he was a VP growth at Ixico, which is a travel company and he helped them grow by 23 times. So he helped them grow their revenue by 23 times when he was there. He is the co-founder of Unlu, a fan to celebrity connect platform. And he has signed some of the biggest talents from India like Guru Randhava, Salim Suleiman, Shan and a lot of other big artists. So yeah, let's welcome Mr. Himanshu to the show. I hope you enjoy this episode. See you. So uh, I first wanted to ask you about this startup, uh, Mr. Himanshu. Unlu, is the, that's how you pronounce it? Unlu or is it U-N-L-U? Or- yeah, yeah. It, it's pronounced as Unlu. Unlu ah. is a Turkish word, which okay. means uh, be famous. Be famous. So like this is, yeah. Okay. This is a platform for famous personalities where we enable common people like us to connect with famous personalities. Mm. You know? mm. And uh, we're doing multiple formats. Video shout out is one thing that is live right now, apart from yeah. your video calls. Yeah, you can yeah. get on a call or get get a video personalized video message from any of your famous celebrities. Ah, but ah. we'll also be very soon launching a format like a master class, which is called Unlu class, where okay. these famous personalities come, and mm. there would be pre-recorded sessions, uh, okay. you know, from like the top guys across various genres in in Bollywood, music, sports, and all. Right, and they'll be giving you. So it's it's meant for like the youth fans, uh, you know, people who are wanting to kind of specialize in these skills so that format is going to be like an inspiration plus learning plus entertainment format for anybody to consume okay so these tutorials you're saying are going to be like music tutorials where they'll teach about music or like what sort of tutorials are going to be across all across all genres not just music you know so let's say there's a very famous personality who comes on board and uh let's say this famous personality is an author right so now this author can uh, tell you about, let's say, his journey, how he started to write, and uh, mm. you know what kind of inspirations do you need, and how do you actually make a full story, like make a full novel out of you know one or two ideas. Mm. So mm. things like these, and then um, and we're talking about legends here, you know. So we are, yeah. we are we're not taking like maybe even like the new age sort of celebrities. We are taking legends for a masterclass mm. because mm. if you want to learn from somebody, if you want to get inspired from somebody, yeah. It, the person has uh, to himself or herself be, you know, a legend. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, so legend, that's you idea. mean like as in the scale of their popularity or the number of years that yeah. they have been in the business? Both, both. I mean, ideally the scale of popularity uh, yeah. and the experience, you know. That's yeah. the reason why we, let's say, don't want to maybe take somebody who's just become famous in the last two, three years is because... Like Kapratikohar for that matter. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. And how did you like come up with this idea? Like, have you been like, did you have this idea since childhood or like, how did you come? Up no, with no, I mean, um, see, we, we've, uh, we, there are four co-founders actually at Nulu, uh, mm-hmm. apart from the three other guys. And yeah. uh, we are all hustlers, you know, we've been working on multiple ideas, multiple uh, sort of thoughts. Mm-hmm. But this is something that, uh, you know, one of the guys, uh, one of the co-founders, he was, he has had some celebrity experience in the past. Okay. Right. So from there, we kind of conceived an idea like this, where, you know, celebrities could join a platform mm-hmm. from where they can manage uh, the one-to-one fan interaction as well as all possible sorts of monetization. So the yeah. vision behind Unlu is maybe two, three years down the line, we yeah. want to become that one, that single platform mm-hmm. where any celebrity can come yeah. and manage all one-to-one fan connections as mm-hmm. well as brand connections, you know, mm-hmm. and monetize and and uh, manage all their sources of monetization 
Okay, so right the now, celebrities can manage their monetizations. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So okay. right now also we enable celebrities to get brand bookings. Hmm. Uh, right, we enable them to get fan bookings uh, from a single platform. Hmm. Hmm. Right, so celebrities are getting bookings from let's say here two three city businesses. Yeah. Uh, let's say like wedding planner in Gujarat, an app hmm. developer in Hyderabad, an interior brand in Bangalore. So people are getting bookings uh, right, left, and center. But and these celebrities were earlier not getting any brand bookings, you know, yeah, because yeah, yeah. either limitations of agencies or not. But right now it's like a public platform which has uh, millions of users coming onto it, right? So hmm. that's how we are kind of democratizing uh, the entire celebrity connect. Beautiful. So that's the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really hmm. cool, actually. Uh, so yeah, when I uh, used to like host events, I don't do that anymore. So uh, this sponsorship and getting sponsors on board for a specific artist used to be like such a big process back then. Yeah, hmm. to approach karo, then the second, then the third. But this is this is like really cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so how long it's been that you started, Undu? Uh, it's been about uh, five months now, and five months, uh, we've been actually going uh, like like we're at a breakneck speed. So every month, in fact, uh, since our launch, we've been uh, doubling up our revenues. Hmm. We've, hmm. we've crossed hundred uh, k dollar revenue last month. Yeah, and. Uh, We've just been doubling our revenue every single month, a hundred percent month on month growth for last five months consistently. Yeah. So you know, the, obviously that means like there was a huge sort of pent up demand for a format like this, for a business like this, hmm. and uh, you know, having celebrities come to a single platform will enable so much of uh, value unlocking exactly. for brands and, and and fans alike. Hmm. You know, so nobody kind of. I would say not nobody, but people tried, let's say, doing it in traditional ways. Like agencies were doing it in very inefficient manner, right? Like mm-hmm. having 20, 30 celebrities and having a very limited set of brands. Here you have yeah. like 500 plus celebrities and thousands of brands yeah. coming onto a platform and doing everything automatically themselves. You know? That's super cool. So uh, I see that you're an investor also, Mr. Himanshu. So like when you start working with a new startup what do you generally look out for ki uh, what what like makes makes or breaks a deal for you ki ha ye sahi hai or do you want to go ahead with this award hmm yeah hmm. i've invested in about five odd startups till date but uh, hmm. not like a very very prolific investor uh, hmm. but uh, yeah i mean what i look out for is obviously these are like very uh, seed stage deals you know like early stage deals hmm. so i look out for uh, you know the founder obviously the team yeah. founding team has to be very very strong yeah because uh, you know any startup be what may they will have to kind of pivot or at least you know try new businesses hmm. and you know they will face those um, chasms right and how hmm. do you cross a chasm is totally dependent hmm. on the founder hmm. so for me that's the most important uh, element and yeah. then comes, you know, the industry or the business they are in. So mm. the kind of competitive landscape and is the business scalable and, you know, what kind of tractions they've seen in the past. Mm. And then uh, after that, like the technology and product, because I mean, I usually I understand product and technology closely. So I usually, yeah. uh, you know, kind of work with uh, product, like work with founders or work with businesses mm. who are tech and product led. Yeah. Was so that your formal team. training in, uh, like, was that your formal training in IAM Kolkata? No, 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 not at all. Uh, like, and engineer. there's no sort of uh, specialization uh, of an MBA at IIM Calcutta, mm-hmm. but uh, I, like, I, I've, I think I dived the product space when I joined Amazon in India in 2013, 14. Mm-hmm. So from then on, I've been a product uh, guy, uh, end to end. Yeah. So yeah, you handle uh, product. Uh, you work as a faculty at Upgrad. For product management yeah. how's that experience like uh, as an educator like i've of course seen the mm-hmm. videos and everything but you as an educator how was your experience it, it's pretty uh, i would say uh, fulfilling you know because uh, the kind of uh, the small nitty-gritty is about product development about you know growth and marketing yeah uh, you kind of always i mean whenever i kind of do some experiments or get some you know good results or uh, get some learnings. I always pen it down, you know, mm-hmm. and I have like so many, uh, almost like some, I don't know, more than like a 50 pages sort of a document with a lot of these insights and, uh, 
things written down right but yeah upgrad actually offers me that opportunity to kind of share my learning share my knowledge with these people right so mm. uh, and the kind of questions that i hear from uh, people clearly you know i feel that uh, there is a huge gap between uh, you know an ideal product guy and mm. the guys who are learning uh, product management or marketing or growth on upgrad right so mm. if my experience and knowledge can help them fulfill or or rather like bridge that gap yeah uh, my 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 job is i mean one better product person in the world is is what i am trying to do you know one step at a time <laughs> no it's really yeah perfect so um can you can you tell me like three things which a new startup guy who's out there looking for funding or scaling up the business uh should keep in mind like you know when when you have the ideal product you know this is the problem this is the solution i'm going to provide or uh, mm-hmm. beach ka they are trying to find the trajectory and trying to find the ways to scale it up so what would mm-hmm. you like to suggest to that guy or a girl yeah i mean there are uh, there are tens of things uh, yeah. if you ask only three things in priority order i would say one would be customer experience yeah you know make sure that uh, you know like there there are like a lot of things like a million uh, sort of problem areas in the world with a million solutions right yeah but uh, not everybody gets it right mm-hmm. the reason is because probably they lack the right customer experience to be able mm-hmm. to you know offer the solution that they are trying to offer mm-hmm. so so the biggest uh, element is uh, or rather the biggest focus should be you offer the most compelling customer experience yeah. in the product or in the solution that you are trying to offer mm-hmm. you know like if the customer experience is good automatically let's say the retention improves the word of mouth improves you know automatically you start getting onto a flywheel of growth which start accelerating more and more fast you know exactly. faster by the day mm-hmm. the second thing would be uh, focus on in unit economics right uh, be whatever stage of the startup you are at uh, mm. you should never let's say lose out on unit economics i mean there have been like stories of startups burning out cash in millions of dollars right but uh, at the end of the day everybody has to come back to unit economics and ensure uh, you know they are they're scaling up uh, logically and sensibly so mm. i would say you know track your numbers very closely uh, get insights regularly and focus on unit economics mm. right mm. and third is uh, you know again like be at whatever stage you may cash is king yeah you know? so at yeah. any stage you have to be very very cognizant of the cash in bank you know mm-hmm. uh, even if you're bootstrapped how much cash you have what are the avenues of generating cash right let's mm-hmm. say funding is one way right but yeah. is there a friends and family is there let's say a business partnership that can give you cash up front is there let's say you know uh, any sort of uh, even like uh, you you can raise capital uh, from a bank right i mean that's what traditional businesses used to do mm-hmm. so if you're very confident on your economics on your business yeah why don't you try raising capital from bank but be cognizant of what's the cash you have what is the cash that you can raise what are the avenues so i would say these are three most important things so the uh, like the thing that you said raising money from the bank if you don't have something like to show to the bank that this is what i have and you can give me the loan on the basis of this if the person doesn't have that and the friends and family you know there are a lot of like crazy ideas that people come up with like i can give you an example thoda weird example hai but like say delhi abhi i am in delhi and there's like tons of pollution here and someone comes up with an idea ki i can sort out this pollution but other mm-hmm. people are going to think that you're crazy to like government is not able to do it these guys are not able to do it how would yeah. you be able to do it and that guy doesn't have money in the bank account so how should he come up with like funding in the idea yeah uh, honestly matlab uh, i my my strong belief is that ideas have zero value yeah uh, you know mm-hmm. till the time you execute something yeah you would proof uh, of business yeah proof of business and uh, till the time you execute something there is no real value hmm. in whatever your idea may be right Exactly. And uh, a lot of times I've seen founders in a lot of uh, instances, people say that okay, this is my idea. I don't want to talk about it. And mm. people say that okay, I want to raise money, but I can't talk about my idea because uh, you know, I don't want to leak it out. So, I was like, you know, ideas have zero value. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, think till yeah, the time yeah. you uh, 
execute and uh, and prove the you know the profitability or the business revenue or the scale or anything like that i would say mm. let's say take this example right i mean somebody figures out a solution for the pollution problem mm. all right mm. now uh, why do you think that somebody can only let's say let's say how how much uh, what what is the total cost that a poc would take you know mm. let's find that out now mm. if the person really really has a strong belief in the in the product then Uh, and it's not that you know you can just raise funds from like a venture capitalist you can raise funds from an angel mm-hmm. you can raise yeah. funds from companies right so uh, one of the companies that i closely work with like it's a robotics company and they weren't able to because it it, it was a very new team like you know new founders uh, not ex entrepreneurs they weren't able to raise funds from venture capitalists but they had a very small product that they built they went went down to maruti suzuki you know yeah. just imagine maruti yeah. suzuki and they got into you know one of the programs that they have for like very very sort of i would say experienced companies and they got mm. into that right and out of some i think 5 or 10 companies these guys emerged as the winners of that of that accelerator program at maruti suzuki so if you have the will if you have you know uh, the right set of product and the right sort of uh, conviction behind that product you can find out ways to grow you know you don't really need to have like a million dollar check to be given out as your you know seed round or pre seed round of to course. be able to succeed so so that's the idea i think uh, you know like let's say in this case let's see you have a strong conviction do a quick small poc or find out you know like write to i would say 1000 people uh, mm-hmm. you know like start connecting people on uh, connecting people on linkedin start uh, connecting people in the government organizations who could listen to you right mm-hmm. maybe after like a month or two months somebody would give you a positive response and start mm-hmm. building a lead from there and start you know developing your product from there maybe like 2 years down the line you would receive a venture capital funding right but till mm-hmm. then you can sustain and it all it all uh, boils down to the conviction that you have in your own product and ideas i understand yeah so how do you like uh, the, the startups to approach you if they are interested to like reach out to you do you like linkedin do you like someone referring you or do you like like what what's that one medium that you like your startup should approach you is should like which is the best medium to approach an investor i mean but see i mean uh, there there are startups which who approach me on multiple mediums it yeah. is like you know times direct whatsapp also they get numbers from some people mm. you know like through contacts or contacts and then people approach through linkedin also mm. actually i'm part of a couple of angel groups Yeah. So the thing is that uh, you know, like uh, in my current state, I'm pretty short on time, so I don't have time to probably go and do a diligence on a particular startup. Of so course. I usually prefer to invest with, let's say, an angel syndicate, or mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. at least like you know, when when there are two three guys already looking into it, and uh, you know, people I know and sort of look up to, and they have conviction in a particular startup, that actually gives a little confidence to me as well. Or let's say you know. in particular cases if i know the founders well like if mm. i know the experience the background mm. or if i've been tracking the founders for a long time so uh these things help uh right but uh, not like earlier when you used to have time and directly kind of do detailed analysis and uh, diligence with the startup so that's mm. that's what i do generally these days mm. mm-hmm. so uh what's like uh, what's your daily schedule like are you like 24/7 involved with onlu or what's your What's your daily routine like? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like twenty four seven involved with Unlu. Always like as a founder, you are uh, always short on time. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know that's the universal thumb rule. Yeah. So uh, always you you're trying to find out newer avenues. I mean, I mostly focus on business growth, and then actually as a founder, you know you're looking at everything right now. Mm-hmm. Even like even though our team has four people, but everybody looks at everything right now just so that yeah. you know because ideation, execution, everything needs multiple hands on deck. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. but yeah, having said that uh, i do try and find out time for uh, you know activities like like a podcast like this which i believe will you know help out even if it goes out and helps out like 10 uh, budding entrepreneurs or yeah. 10 sort of uh, other people in whichever manner i'm, I'm super happy right because mm. see it's the time to give back to the society right in whichever manner you can exactly so either you help founders financially or you help them with ideas or you help them with motivation whatever can be i mean i try and find out time for that Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah what's your personal I, motivation for doing this yeah i as i said right i mean it's uh, like you know if you if you uh, i don't know how much uh, i i didn't sorry ask you earlier but like 
how much experience do you have in in like let's say professional work and all couple of eight, years eight years eight years seven eight yeah years. see i mean i'm sure like now you would probably understand relate with me right and now there there comes one time when you realize that okay i've been working working and slogging uh, you know hours and hours right Mm-hmm. and what are you doing that for you know at the end of the day it's not just for uh maybe that that uh, check that comes in your bank account every month or or, exactly. or that money that you make maybe on a mm-hmm. sale of a startup right yeah. you're doing that for uh, a greater good right and maybe let's say uh not everybody like i i would say i'm not that maybe like you know financially so sound up that i can start writing checks to ngos and all right mm-hmm. uh, maybe in mm-hmm. a couple of years i would be in a position i hope right that i can start supporting society yeah in whichever manner i can but like at this stage if you can uh, you know i mean my personal motivation is that uh, whatever i have learned whatever i have uh, you know like and it gives me actually it, it really gives me goosebumps as well as gives me um, you know the satisfaction at the end of the day mm-hmm. if i kind of mentor a startup and they and and then ensure they see the light at the end of the tunnel you know they reach the next step so a lot of these my mentee startups have raise subsequent funds you know mm-hmm. with like no personal interest that i have in these startups but just because of let's say continuing to support them continuing to motivate them or at times you just need a sounding board right exactly. all you need yes. as a startup is like a sounding board who could say yes to the right ideas say no to the wrong ideas and you know help you find the right connects right so that's that's my personal motivation i don't know if i was able to kind of No, no. Uh, I, I, I got what you mean, and um, it was yeah, mm-hmm. it was really nice to know that. So, how was your journey working with Exico and Amazon, and what did it teach you about the ecosystem? No, oh, yeah, I mean every experience I've had in life is uh, is unique, and is uh, I'm super thankful that I've had that experience. So, mm-hmm. starting with Amazon, uh, I joined Amazon when it was being launched in India. Mm-hmm. You know that uh, small team which was launching it in India, and uh, had a great amazing set of folks i worked with in fact like like the the base or the fundamentals of customer experience that i've built uh, my entire learnings on is due to amazon because of the culture that it has you know mm. i mean i wish uh, <laughs> that uh, you know like even in, so so even before amazon was bain and company you know mm. that actually taught uh, me to be very very data driven mm. you know and be very smart with data play numbers yeah. and you know, because it actually plays an important role in decision making and mm. strategizing right mm. and um, had a great experience working across various verticals and from then on i joined amazon which taught me customer experience and and product you know like the basic essence of product work mm. with the with like world renowned product leaders i mean in india and us and seattle mm. uh, like the teams in seattle are like you know out of the world I mean, the product experience is You've been there and have spoken to them. Yeah, in, in US in Seattle, uh, when I worked directly with the with the product guys there. So amazing experience, and then Exigo was a completely different uh, environment, right? I yeah. mean, I decided to take the startup plunge because I always knew I wanted to start up myself, mm-hmm. but I wanted to get the right set of experiences, the right set of network, uh, so that I I kind of minimize the failure chances, you mm-hmm. know. so everybody mm-hmm. starts up a lot of people start up very early without sort of any experience and all mm-hmm. and i would say uh, you know like the kind of will determination great uh, or or like you know little bit of luck everything is in the favor so that uh, you know they succeed and uh, succeed early on in life right yeah. i mean i always wanted to start up but i thought maybe i'll get you know the right set of network and experience so that i minimize the failure chances and improve the success chances and that's why i decided to start up like probably about spending 4 years at exigo where you know so uh, amazing experience at exigo i grew it from about like 5 million users to 150 million users uh, mm. in a period of 4 years you know with more than 90% being organic so that actually taught me a lot on growth business marketing and uh, like joined it uh, pretty early on and like you know stages where uh, i worked across uh, business uh, partnerships marketing uh, content you know pr like a lot of verticals so that's the best idea that's the best part of uh, working with an early stage company you learn across multiple domains and, you know so how yeah. do you like uh, mr manish i want to know like how do you go from one person company to like you know having people working for you and then 
what's that process and how, what are those stages like what's the mindset that you should go ahead with if you want yeah to i mean like, uh, ha huh. see when you have a one person or like even a five member team right uh, yeah then in that, that stage you are doing everything yeah you know hmm. you are at a at a stage where you have to execute something you have to plan uh, ideate and execute and ensure that you know that idea carries through and the execution is done very well hmm. right hmm. so doing Uh, product you're doing partnerships you're doing design you're doing marketing growth everything even like fundraising you know so yes everything as a founder you're doing right uh when you scale that five member to team to let's say a 20 or 30 member team and you're a founder of that startup mm. then your major responsibility is uh ideating validating their ideas so so you know at that stage you are now your your role is to make high quality decisions mm. you know on a everyday basis and motivate your team members so that they can execute those decisions in the right manner in the exact same manner as probably you would have executed hmm. right so as our organization right now is growing my more and more of my time is being spent working directly with people uh, you know instead of executing it myself to ensure that you know everybody is probably doing things even better than the way i could probably have done exactly. you know yeah. i was doing it so that's my main objective that's my main motive and actually motivating your employees uh, is a very very important aspect uh, you know having a high employee retention in early mm-hmm. stages of startup is very important yeah that's what your time also goes into and this goes for any sort of startup yeah absolutely yeah uh so uh, one very dumb question you might find it really dumb that is there a formula to get rich or financially independent quick if a guy has an idea say uh, say like he's in standard 12th and how should he start putting out it into action without no experience without any family or anyone supporting him or yeah i honestly won't have any answer to it because i haven't done that Yeah. So if I don't have any personal experience doing it, if I even say anything like that, it'll just be you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It'll be hard. Or make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. So how was your college life, and how has it formed you? What you are right now? I am. Oh uh, yeah, college life was uh, really fun. I mean, I have. Very, how long back was this? So, in. 2010 i finished my uh, engineering college and yeah. 20 well to 14 now was the i am calcutta so but uh, engineering was really great i mean i formed uh, a set of great uh, friends you know the bonds that we share is are they so strong that you know even if I, if we meet like after like 5 years with someone mm. uh, we meet as if you know we've been we've been always together like you know so yeah, yeah, share yeah. that so those great bonds especially you know if you live in a hostel and all yeah so yeah. so is it more about education being in iim or is it more about community like the people you are with yeah see uh, when you go for your college education it's more about you know more education but on hindsight you know i mean on hindsight i can tell and hmm. tell everyone yeah. that uh, you know college is about developing great networks and relations right mm, and yeah. uh, getting exposure to right set of let's say companies and opportunities you know international contests and a lot of these things right communities that you're part of interacting with your alumni yeah. so developing those network is super important right let's say you become like a student council leader mm. now that is such a powerful position that it will help you throughout your life you know let's say 10 mm. years down the line if you're at a company or if you're setting up your own company you yeah. reach out to let's say your uh two three batch senior or junior to you mm. everybody pro- would probably know you right as yeah. a student council head mm. right so mm. i think on hindsight uh, i feel that it's obviously education is there it yeah. will kind of make you slightly better as a human being but uh, the network uh, the opportunities that you take is is you know the kind of key areas hmm. uh that that matter and if one is not able to get through iim how does he or she starts going about it generally like yeah i mean i i feel uh, iim is just like you know 
one of the good institutes with a very great set of alumni but there are so many other good institutes right i mean no, not institutes just like general in life if one doesn't want to do an mba and thinks he's an entrepreneur and wants to start out how does he start building the community uh, hey there there's so many guys like there's so many even dropouts right like yeah. you look at anybody like a zuckerberg or jobs or you know every, mm. they, they, they dropped out of college here so yeah, i think yeah. uh, it's not mandatory to at all get an mba or mm. anything it's just about as i said you know the will and all so Hmm. I know hmm. so many strong guys, so many you know entrepreneurs uh, in India who yeah. have uh, scaled to like unicorns and all, and hmm. some of them, you know, obviously like all all graduates, but uh, you know they build their connections and all by themselves. Yeah, they did not rely on, let's say, an MBA degree or anything. Right? So it's just about your great determination, like just about reach outs, right? Hmm. I would say like if anybody is looking an answer to build how to build a network, I would say. start connecting with 10 people daily on linkedin who yeah. kind of look up to you know mm. and with with a meaning with a with a with a purpose at with a meaning or a purpose <laughs> not like hey how are you <laughs> good morning yeah. those, those we are good morning messages that you get on whatsapp yeah. <laughs> so i actually uh, was talking to uh, this uh, he's an entrepreneur as well uh, mr nagraj prakash so he is more into agriculture technology So I uh-huh. want to ask you from that perspective, and he said one thing that India should play on, uh, you know, it, our on India's strength. Like we should, we should play on India's strength, which is people, mm-hmm. like the number of population that we have, and the technology, and uh, what was the other thing? People, technology, and yeah, something like this. So agriculture is what he thinks that we can do from India to abroad, and. uh there are like mnc's who are like coming to india and they are setting up their business but if we want to go india to outside it can be through agriculture so what i want right. to ask you like what's your take on agriculture have you ever been involved with an agricultural startup or yeah i mean see honestly india is an agriculture first company i mean since decades we've been uh i would say agriculture has been like the main source of income for majority of the population right yeah but like if you look at Let's say country like US, it is mm-hmm. so super efficient that less than ten percent of its population is engaged in agriculture. Yet it produces almost the same uh, sort of uh, level of you know production in to agriculture as India. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, India maybe in like a decade or so should become uh, like a net exporter of all agricultural commodities led by the super high efficiency through. Uh, mechanization automi- automation as well as high quality seeds and all the only thing is that you know this is limited to a few parts of the country right now mm-hmm. while majority of the parts are still involved with agriculture in the traditional manner but over a decade or so with the yeah, with, with so many startups actually coming in this field right mm-hmm. uh, i know so many of friends who are in the agri tech space yeah uh, i feel that the you know because now everybody in the world in in india especially has mobile phones right so mm-hmm. you are able to reach out to those people and tell them the advantages and and over the next decade i feel the agriculture output should improve significantly uh you know and uh, yeah i think uh, like that that disruption is yet to happen yeah. we have already built a base for it so next 10 years uh, should be expecting that so i went to this investor meeting like couple of years back and i was met one guy there and he told me that i'm growing vegetables and all in water Like there's no soil also. It's just water, and I I've grown tomatoes, and the size that I want. Say if I want like the radius to be five centimeter, yeah, ten centimeter, I can actually do that. Like, do it. I have actually come for my funding, but yeah, <laughs> your idea sounds way cooler. <laughs> the <laughs> mm-hmm. so like uh-huh. there's also kisi education related for the music education i went the uh, investing with it or we go to complex ho gaya they said they they you go on this so what was your first startup like did you always want to be an entrepreneur and what do you think is the role of an entrepreneur is it like making money and giving it back to the society or what's the role of an entrepreneur in the Yeah, I mean, uh, answer to the first part is yes. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur someday. Uh, you know, that was has always been my dream. 
Uh, the role of an entrepreneur depends on the entrepreneur, honestly, you know. But uh, essentially, if you look at it, every entrepreneur has a vision or a dream to disrupt the space or to become like a leader in the space that they he or she is operating in. Hmm. You know, that's the first sort of objective. Uh, obviously, giving back to society is uh, maybe with some of them or most of them right from the beginning. Uh, but eventually, let's say if you amass a lot of wealth, eventually, you know, you start learning that. uh you start learning that from the people who you look up to you know you look at bill gates you look at warren buffet you look at um, any of these guys you know jeff bezos any of these guys who have amassed a lot of wealth uh you know and thus let's say when you do that you start uh, sort of giving back to society right yeah But, so how do i validate my idea say if i'm giving like a service or a product uh, to this education field may if i have something like i'll give you a real life example i am a music educator just my it is in music technology how to produce music and later i found out ki uh, since i'm in delhi but i have been approached by guys in say up the tier 2 tier 3 cities say and mm-hmm. i figure and i saw that uh, there's there's like a bigger demand there that like you know they're properly they, they're talented people and they need the sort of education but what i mm-hmm. wanted to know was ki um, uh is this idea like uh, validation of that idea you know ki would this even survive or would this even is this even needed you know what i mean because there are a lot of startups uh, there are a lot of companies already in this in this scene in the ecosystem so the, how do i know that you know my idea would survive or should i even give it some time or like, how do i know it's a good idea but what's the idea i mean i still don't understand your idea is to teach music uh, music technology creation. and use these like really killer artists because we have 28 states and 28 different sort of legendary music in each and right, every right. state yeah so what i want to you know is ki i want to bring them together educate them with the new technology like say you might have heard the song despacito this 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 so it's a spanish track mixed with electronic music and became a big <laughs> like became number 1 on billboard we can i was thinking we can do the same with these legendary artists that we have in these 28 states and fuse their music with whatever that's going on in the mainstream and then just india to outside you know rather than just getting like we are doing hip hop right now we are doing rap music we are doing hip hop music but that came from america and we just put like the hindi aspect of that to rap but what i want mm-hmm. is the authentic music fused with this and then i just put it out there so i educate them about the technology yeah yeah, yeah yeah see uh, i would say like you know if you have an idea if you've done some trials if you know people who would want to do it right mm-hmm. uh, that's your bare bone structure validation mm-hmm. right yeah. let's say you talk about this with let's say 10 or 20 relevant people who could be your potential customers mm-hmm. you know from different cities maybe mm-hmm. like a metro city or a tier 1 2 city Yeah. and see their response you know tell them this is the price point this is what i'll be teaching you are you interested or not all right that's the bare bone sort of market research next if you let's say if that stage passes right you receive enough number of uh, positive sort of uh, you know comments right then then you move and let's say try with products like udemy and all where you can list out courses right you build a course something you list out again bare bone structure you don't have to use your technology or your anything like that but at least start with that right mm. and then in that course you can always cross sell saying that okay this is the next part to it where you need like a hardware and you learn that hardware and you know you are available here for that right mm. and uh, i would say you know these are the starting points let's say you this there's so many people who have started with a lot of these amazing uh, practices right like let's say you become an overnight success you get like 10000 udemy registrations right your next step is teaching them offline face to face so you start doing uh, city wise classes so you announce your schedule like how musicians announce their schedule in advance and say that okay uh, next month 20th you are going to bangalore right and you start taking registrations for bangalore and then you travel and then you do that and then maybe the next stage is you start opening up offline branches in each of these cities and now instead of you doing everything you are getting the people who you trained in each of these cities they are employed by you and they train for the people right So that's just one way of doing it. There, there are n number of ways of doing it, but so yeah, this about, uh, yeah, so yeah, this thing that I want to say, like I have 
taught like lot of students till now like lot of tier 2 tier 3 metropolitan city guys also but uh, the musicians that i'm talking about are those uh, say rajasthani sindhi sarangi players they don't mm. understand technology and they are maybe in their 50s or 60s they are about to like you know they are the last of their generation so i'm just saying ki uh, how do i uh, you know they won't understand the technology of course if i start to teach them on zoom or anything they won't get it mm. but uh, what i feel is that thing should be preserved because th- those are the last guys of you know of this sort of tradition of this sort of music and if they go away and it happens in all of the states like it happened in 28 yeah. states if there are like specific instrument that only this guy plays and if he's no more there this music is is not going to be there anymore so it's like that and they won't market size, i mean i would then say like what's the market size of it and uh, let's say if it stays if it doesn't stay uh, who is it creating an impact for right are there mm-hmm. let's say companies willing to sponsor the kind of music or are there uh, let's say companies willing to host events for that kind of music you know you understand need to understand the market size for it yeah so there would there should be a reason why that music is dying down right is it uh, because there is no sort of takers for it like no nobody is asking because if let's say people were be like okay i need to kind of uh, you know listen to this music uh, it needs to be in my you know uh, hotel or my event or wherever mm-hmm. then it would be in demand people would be learning it right mm-hmm. so see everything everything dies on for a reason let's say i'll look at like let's say cameras like traditional cameras they died down for a reason because there's a better technology or there's a better way of doing something right uh, so i would say it's it's not just about you know like like the the important part about doing that validation is the market research that understanding why things are happening the way they are happening and if there is an opportunity in it so that's that's the that's the bottom line i think uh so how acha this is okay so lo, uh, like roadblocks to look out for when you're just starting out like when you're just starting out mm see everybody uh, i mean again there are like hundreds of roadblocks right i mean is it about before you starting or after you start after, after after you started up this only hiring is probably the biggest roadblock i would say i mean every founder is probably spending an hour towards every day on hiring you know then uh, like getting you know uh, like the every revenue, hour like, every every couple of hours is there every day an hour or two hours hmm. is being spent on hiring that's the that's the least i'm talking about honestly i mean i i spend more time interviewing every day on a daily basis you know because uh, it depends you know for a startup you need to get the right people the right team hmm. so it takes time but yeah i mean see honestly there there's so many roadblocks and uh, like you can ask anybody right i mean they would they would kind of tell you that okay these are the problems like for some of them it's about fundraise for some of them it's about you know the product don't have it, not having the tech expertise or having the tech expertise but not having the business expertise mm-hmm. because you know you don't find the right set of founding team also always yeah, right i mean yeah, yeah. lack of one or two aspects so mm-hmm. a lot of uh, roadblocks would be there yeah. it's about like finding out how to solve for it and being smart and solving for it yourself let's say like let's take an example of funding the uh, uh, i want to get funded so you said angel investors are not going after venture capitalists just go for an angel investor that is really rich so what's the way to approach that person should i just walk in their office or nahi nahi yaar funding ka i think wo sab to bahut baat kar that's the last that's the last leg of fundraise the first step is to first ask uh, all the questions that a potential vc or a angel can ask you you know and you would find that question on google the, the list of 100 questions on google right think through all the questions because that will give you enough time to improvise your product improvise your overall experience right okay. let's say the question is uh, what's the retention rate okay what's your month one retention rate month two retention rate and then you would like oh i'm not tracking it or let's say you're tracking it and it's, it's pretty low right mm-hmm. so first i think you need to fix that and improve that right mm-hmm. because Uh, otherwise like a vc or at least need a, you need to have an answer for it right saying that okay it is low because xyz things or you know this is the road map and this is how i'll improve it so i would say first have that ready then have your deck ready you know with like projects and all your financial model ready 
everything has to be in in line right and the team has to be compelling enough so let's say if you don't have if you're like a sole founder and if you don't have a tech expertise you need to have at least a tech founder co-founder you need to at least have a person in your team mm-hmm. who uh you know leads tech because i don't know of any startup which has a uh, sort of very limited number of people and has outsourced everything else you know you need to build a team because you know that's a team we can bank on because outsourcing is something that everybody discounts you know aaj hai kal nahi hai so i think solving for all of that and then reaching out to guys and reaching out is also like straight forward yeah there there's so many directories available online which can with contacts and all if nothing if you don't have anything then uh, all you do is reach out through linkedin start doing that or the investor vc pages or apply to accelerators apply to uh, the, the the angel networks you know so many so many places to do that it's easy the way that you say it you just cold call them or just send them a mail or they just just send them a linkedin it's just that yeah, easy, right? people don't do it because the thing is they are afraid to and i've seen it in founders you know i've seen it people are like okay i don't want to do it what if i don't receive a response right now you know mm. i'll hold back till i get this this thing done you know or i'll wait for two months before i do that and by two months you're realizing okay you are so short on cash that okay next month you are going to shut down right mm. and nobody is going to fund you in a month it's so, actually happened to me once yeah yeah so so mm. i think i know a lot of founders who feel like that so i think it's just about reaching out and i can tell you right away that you know out of 100 people like maybe 20 30 will respond and tell you that you go Idea is interesting there, but they they are not investing right now. Or one or two guys will be like, okay, let's get on a call, right? So that's the success rate. That's what you need. One or two guys out of hundred guys, right? What are they actually looking for? Is it just multiplying their money? Like I, I don't want to like sound whatever, but uh, what are these investors or venture capitalists looking? Why are they? Why do they want to invest? It? Like apart from money, do they have any other motive as well? Yeah, they're investor. Yeah, uh, I mean, every investor is looking for uh, what, like you know, money multiplication for wealth, right? Mm-hmm. But having said that, they want to make the right bets. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to make the right bets in the sense that it's like any invest in a stock market. Why does anybody invest in a stock market? Because they have funds and they want to get like a higher return than, let's say, a uh, standard the bank FD rate of say seven percent. Money real estate for that matter. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what right because mm-hmm. there is a risk factor associated with it let's say there is a risk factor of 40 50% of the startups failing then they need to have an irr which is kind of discounting that risk factor so yeah that's what it is and uh, how did covid affect your routine like when modi ji came on the news and said from 22nd of march everything is going to be shut shut so what was going through your head at that And how was the lockdown? My head personally, or or the business you're saying? Less in general, what was your life like when that happened? Yeah, I mean, I honestly knew that uh, this is expected to happen in India. I mean, I didn't know the date and all. Obviously, it was a surprise for me, as it was for a lot of guys. But mm. I was always expecting it's going to happen because of the kind of stats and all I was reading. Uh, you know, and India was bound like the kind of. the the way we interact with people and all it was always bound to happen but i mean that that announcement was a surprise because it ca- came in as a shock right and mm. uh, all of a sudden but yeah i mean having said that uh, i mean i don't remember any other feelings mm. that day yeah just being at home for 24 hours and feel like it starts to feel mm. like that after a week true 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 that's true mm. So, what's that one thing that that you think he did? If I knew this back in school, things would have been much easier. Then anything like that? He this is if if I had known this one thing before, or maybe like a couple of things, mm. my decisions, my this thing would have been much easier. No, yeah, I mean I don't somehow recall such things. But yeah, I mean having said that, like let's say if you. If your question is more round, let's say uh, maybe the, like I, I'll just elaborate a bit more. कि जैसे बहुत सारे होते हैं कि they are in uh, like you know back in school they were introverted and this had always occupied their head. Why am I not able to do it? And when they start uh, break that shell and they start being on stage or reaching out to more people, they realize that that it's just just a small bubble in my head. 
So if I had known mm-hmm. it, like, you know, back in school or back this, things would have been so much like cooler mm-hmm. or easier. So is there anything like that? Yeah, uh, honestly, I mean, I was uh, an extrovert and I was uh, almost participating in a lot of activities in school, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Uh, both where, was like where, where was your school? In Jaipur, St. Xavier, Jaipur. Achha. I was like, uh, even like, you know, out of batch of what, 300 guys, I was the head boy there in, in the in the 12th standard. But mm. uh, I think uh, what I kind of missed out on was in my college days where mm. I took uh, or rather like spent a lot of time in just, I would say, you know, what everybody does in engineering college, like, you know, loitering around, mm. <laughs> not doing anything product, uh, I would say. You know, productive. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe if I knew you want to be more productive, you think you wanted to be more productive back then? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I interact with so many students. I take part in so many of these. Uh, I judge so many of these competitions. I did that mm-hmm. IIT and then this um, DC D, DTU recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like the students these days are, they they are like I would say ten times uh, better than what I was in my college days. I mean, they they, they have a they have a vision. They they've already thought what they want to kind of achieve in their lives through a particular startup, right? And they they're already working on it. I would say, if I was probably doing something like that, I would uh, maybe be in a much sort of uh, a, a very different position right now. You know, I would have probably started up uh, way way early, maybe at least like a ten years earlier or something. But uh, yeah, I think that's what I missed out in my in my college life. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't <laughs> kind of. Uh, depend anything because of course. In, in that time i mean i spend that time building great connections with friends who i can kind of rely on for anything in life today right so i mean it's all part of life you learn from things yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's just to add a little drama to this you know <laughs> it gets the emotions <laughs> <of that. laughs> i know yeah so uh yeah, I'm, I'm getting, like, I'm hearing this thing every couple of days that these new guys in, like, engineering colleges or these new guys in MBA colleges are doing way better. I haven't yeah. met them personally, but I get this almost every second day. <laughs> they are getting better and I almost feel like those uncles when back in class, hey, ye bade hai aur ye hai. <laughs> I know, yeah. Ye to har generation ka hi hai. Yeah, these new guys they are going to take over everything. That's the... What do you call it? The world's story. Who is the who is the company Google is most afraid of? It's not afraid of the Amazon or Microsoft or Facebook, right? It's afraid of the guys who are working in their garages right now and building something big, maybe to disrupt the Google search, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's what that's what big companies are afraid of. So yeah, great, awesome. Um, so actually, sorry, I had a hard stop at three o'clock, but sorry, I'm just like kind of interrupting. But is that uh, sort of fine if we maybe wrap up in the next five minutes? Yeah, yeah, that that's perfectly all right. It's just one, yeah, one more intense dramatic question. I, I think I around. missed telling you about it earlier. So yeah, that's okay. So yeah, one. Uh, a little intense, like any rock bottom experience that you had in life, and what did you learn from? Any sort of what? Rock bottom experience in life, and what did you rock learn bottom from? Experience. Rock bottom, yeah, rock bottom. Uh, what, what, you're just twenty eight uh, or thirty right now. What's your age? Like, yeah, you're yeah so I'm uh, mm-hmm. just trying to think about uh, a rock bottom moment. In, in personal life, there have been a lot of uh, rock bottom moments. I mean, I would probably not be sharing it here, but uh, in yeah. uh, in personal life, uh, I don't remember a rock bottom moment. I mean, professionally, work wise, I feel uh, I mean that's what I feel. I feel I'm a level headed guy, so I mean, I take like uh, both success and uh, sort of failure, you know, kind of in the in the similar manner. Hmm. I mean, I, in the sense, like my, my head starts working on the next thing, you know, I mean, I, I whatever happens, you know, it's, it's always like, ab kya kare? what is the next step, you know, mm-hmm. like we've succeeded something you've done, like amazingly well, you know, I'm just saying yeah. we've been doing 100% revenue growth month on month, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like we'll sit down and party or we'd be like, okay, yaar, ab to matlab, mene, matlab, we've done doubled our revenue every single month. Mm-hmm. We need to kind of, you know, party. I mean, it's like, what do we do next month? You know, are we doing 100% next month? Let's draw a roadmap for that. 
you know, I'd sit with my team and ek ek uh, you know like every single source of revenue we would kind of work on and see whether we'll be able to achieve the next month hundred percent growth or not. So that's what we do. I mean, that's what uh, I think. That's what everybody should kind of. Uh, that's how you should take your success and failure equally. Continuous growth. Continuous yeah. growth and grow every day and learn new stuff. Yeah, and plan for the next thing. Plan for the next uh, next item or next sort of focus area. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, that's it. That's that's what I wanted to get to know from you. And yeah, thank you for this. Thank you for your time. Great, lovely, yeah, lovely interacting with you. But uh, I think such things are great because they also kind of uh, you know self introspection हो जाता है. Aha. You can talk to yourself and tell such things. But yeah, I mean. Good time and respecting for uh, the other guy also. So thanks exactly. for that. Yeah, it's almost like what I feel is that, like, uh, like when back in school, when you want to approach like a really beautiful girl, you are not able to normalize the beauty, right? So you are always like, oh, dude, what am I going to say? Same is like business yeah. also. That people think, yeah. oh, they are like you know, they're so up my. Whatever league, I don't, I can't even relate to them. And then we just do this podcast, and they feel like, oh, they almost feel like we do it. <laughs> Everyone's like us, you know, the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Take care. Great. Thanks a lot, Arpit. Had a great time, man. Take care. Yes, bye. 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 Take care.